All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I hit the wrong button. I am sorry. So I got to wait for AJ to come back on. Ugh, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> All right. There you are. Okay, sending. Okay, so it wasn't me. Sorry, guys. Yeah, leave it to me. I put it. I put it normal. Okay. <laughs> I think it's kind of ironic that when you ask me the most complicated question, that's when it went off. Um, are you yeah, asking me? <laughs> who who AJ is or who Brooklyn is? <coughs> Both. Who who AJ, what? AJ, <laughs> AJ is this little confident, suave, Rico Suave, flirtatious, you know, just fun loving. It, 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 well, not a pimp daddy, just <laughs> not like a mad daddy, but but I'm real. I am. I'm def. I'm a definite flirt. You know, I flirt even when I don't even realize I'm flirting. And on yeah. the stage, I'm very positive and full of life. But off stage, not so much. I'm actually, right, right. I can't say that I'm quiet. Quiet would not be a word I would use to describe me. Right. But I am more no. introverted at home. You know what I'm saying? When I'm at home, I like to be at home. I don't like to be wallet out in the clubs and I don't um, right, right. Home is like my zen spot, and right. I'm not as secure as people think I am. I'm actually quite opposite. I'm really still very insecure. Right. Um, and I'm still full of my own little fears. But I learned a long time ago that you had to keep their persona very different than than your normal because if you don't you get lost and then you don't know who was who. Right. And, you know, I lost it for, for a short period of time and I couldn't tell you the difference between the two, but um, I figured right. that out. So AJ, AJ is just, you know, he likes to be the center of attention, but at the same time, after a while, being in the club is like, yeah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Brooklyn doesn't like I'm to be in the clubs at, at, at all. At home, I am very, um, very different. The only similarities between the two is both individual and persona are very active in, um, in the area of recovery. Right. I never at right. any point maintained my anonymity like most people. And it didn't make any sense to me. You know, I made my disease very public. <laughs> right, right. So it didn't make sense for me to get sober and be hush-hush about it. And I wanted... Right. I started talking about it on, a on AJ's page more and more because um, I wanted other entertainers to realize that they don't have to completely get trashed. And it's possible right. to do something that you love doing without letting the booze or the drugs get in the way. Right, right. Because all too often, you and I both know that drugs and alcohol are a common denominator in this business. <laughs> it is, it is. And a lot it's, of people I... have an issue with it, but, but well, it's part of the business. So I wanted to show that, right. A, it's nothing to be ashamed about. Right. And... Um, B, it's possible, no matter how bad your past is, it's possible that you can get sober and get a do-over at life and still enjoy what you're doing. So I think that that right, is the right. only thing that, that AJ and Brooklyn definitely have in common. You know, th that's the okay. one thing. I, I talk about it on, on my personal page as well, and I'm just very, very open about it because... You know, alcoholism and drugs are very, um, they run rampant in the gay community. Yeah. But it's also something that nobody ever talks about. Yeah. And by Everybody's not talking doing it. about it, yeah, keeping it hush-hush is just adding fuel to the fire. 
So I am on the inside. I am really still like this um, insecure kind of child. I'm still trying to figure out who I am, but but I do know that I still have my own insecurities, and when I have to put out, get into face, it it literally is like playing dress up because I literally get to be a whole nother person, even if it's only for a few hours, and I can forget those insecurities. <laughs> right. Instead of picking up a bottle, I pick up drag. <coughs> No, that's and it's it's actually a good thing because it gets you it gets you to that place. It gets you to where, you know, I always say when you're in drag, you dare do things you normally wouldn't do. Very true. In the sense through your expression. You know. Very true. So uh, okay, yeah, well right now we're gonna whole body. I play I told my wife the other day, I was like, I have turned into a typical old Latin lady. I've got vine plants all over the place. <laughs> oh, I just bought and I have to take one. care of my plants. Yeah. Your sound is out one. there. Your sound is going in and out. Oh, is it? Yeah. Let me check. No, I'm still and connected. That's what I do at home. I'm just like, uh, if I'm not playing in the yard, I'm, I'm watering the plants and I'm Little Miss Susie Homemaker, which surprises a lot of people. Right, well, right. <laughs> did I mention I was a regular person? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's... I, I don't wild out the way I used to. And, and age really doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. It's like, I think at, at some point we all have to grow up and you can only wild out in the clubs, but for so long. Yeah. Before yeah, it and gets it gets old. <laughs> yeah, I become you start one realizing of those people, there's. I've become one of those people that'll that'll stand in the back of the club, up against the wall, watching and going, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> yeah. uh, I get it. I get it. You want to do more constructive stuff with your time, you know? I do. I do. So, that makes total sense. All right, well, right now we are at 8.47. We have 12 minutes. We went a little over <laughs> on the interview, but we're going to leave it now open for questions. Um, sadly, I lost half the people because, damn, I pressed up. See, it wasn't button. me. And wasn't this little Latin boy getting into trouble this time? It was the other little son. Latin boy. Yeah, I know, right? So, but I want to leave it open for any questions that people may have. Um, but okay. if you don't do the questions now, put them in the comments and we'll get back to it. You know, and I'll make I'm sure AJ gets it. I'm answering questions. So if I, if, if after we leave, um, I'll probably scroll through this again. And if somebody yeah. has a question, well, I, I, I'll, I don't have no problems chiming in. I'm not what you would yeah. call quiet. No. No, because that new Eurekan. Yeah, man, I haven't heard that expression in a long time. Yep, the New Yorican. I'm a Jersey Rican, but <clears throat> yeah, close enough so. to New York. You're definitely closer. Hi, Wendy. Wendy Miller is my daddy's wifey. Wifey. Oh, okay. And she is well, I'm glad in. you can see. I can see. <laughs> I couldn't see it the other way. You had it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because I was seeing all the comments and all the, the questions. Um, somebody did ask a question earlier, <clears throat> and they okay. said, why are not things basically booked in Jacksonville? Like, what, what turned it around? Jacksonville? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> there was, out of all the clubs in Jacksonville, there was... Um, one lesbian bar left, which was my home bar, the Norm. And okay. when the Norm closed their doors, there was no longer a venue for the drag kings. Mm. You know, Jacksonville is all about the queens and the real boys. Yeah. But I, but I can't only say I can't only blame it on um, on the venues. A friend of mine and I were talking about this not too long ago, 
And she said, it's also the lesbians, you know, they get to a point where they grow up and they don't want to be yeah. in a bar. Right. So it's a combination of things, but there's just no, and it hurt my heart because there have been several entertainers that came here to Jacksonville that hit me up talking about where can I go to see a King show? And it uh, hurt my heart to be like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just the way the way it is. You know, a lot of the lesbian community, they, they trade in the bar scene and everything for kayaking and barbecuing and, and, and doing more normal stuff. They don't want to be out in a bar till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, so unfortunately, right. here there's no... Um, there's no place for the for the boys to go, but that is a curse that is spreading all over the country. It you know is. What I'm saying? It is. It is. It's becoming a problem. But I can say a part of that, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is some of the king's fault. Yes, they can on the stage in you know? jeans, t-shirts, and sweat clothes, and do that whole "ta-da, I'm here," and they don't want to see that. They want to come it's to see the show. And if your cost costuming is very, very important in this business. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And you don't have to go all Liberace. Like, I am a definite bling king. If you had to put a label on me, I'm a bling king. Yes. And the reason I do that is because I don't sew like some little talented individual Latin boys in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I have to do something very different with my outfits to make them stand out. Right, but you don't have right. to go all Liberace. You just have to set your clothes different than what you would walk, you know, up and down the streets in. Yeah, yeah. Bridget Maxim says okay. we definitely need more King shows everywhere. Bridget, I be I I agree with you. I do. It's it's it's, and it's hard to have king shows because people want to see queens because it kings is, don't get the also, one of the one of the um i've, I've spoken to quite a few oh, i don't think you got stuck you still there oh no aj <clears throat> i lost you no, you didn't oh. lose me. My phone rang. Oh, my it's your brother. Um, one of the <laughs> things that the venue owners would tell me is that when, in their opinion, when it came to the Kings, the only thing that came with the Kings was drama. Wow. You know what I'm yeah, and it wasn't the first time I had heard that. You know, the yeah. Kings come in and they have jealous girlfriends and they're, they're fighting all over the bar and they're fighting in the dressing rooms and blah, 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 blah. And they just don't want to deal with the drama. That's no. why I said they you, don't un, they don't understand in in when you go to these places, it's a job. You have to treat it like a job. Me and my dry dad just started one here in Lee Valley. Our first King show was last Saturday. Until two years ago, I didn't even know Kings is. Uh, and Amy said, "Kings is." Uh, you know what, Amy? Believe it or not, a lot of people don't know that we exist. And every time I hear somebody say. I didn't even know y'all existed. It hurts my heart. Yeah. Because we've been around for a long time. If you do your, your uh, history check, drag kings have been around for a long time. Very long time. Like back in the 30s. 20s. <clears throat> it's, 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 been, it's been a thing. Uh, here in Pennsylvania, like I get Lehigh Valley did have a... Uh, an all king show but here in lancaster we've done multiple we've been very lucky here in lancaster to have multiple king shows you know whether i've headed it myself or you know somebody else did but and that's that's it's like aj there was like a small explosion and then it died again yeah like a couple of years ago you remember vaguely I remember yeah, like that a couple you, were, years you and everything else was really, really, really big. And then all of a sudden, um, it dwindled. It, it seemed to me that the kings that surrounded you were not yeah. as as out there as, as you. And just let me, I'm about to embarrass you, but I can do that because I'm daddy. Um, I have to say that I am very, very proud 
of you for the things that you do, not only in the drag community, but in the community as a whole. And, and you represent what the boys used to be. And I love that about you. I just watched Amy, Amy Kling. I just watched a drag King documentary on YouTube last night. So I know the history a little better now. Yeah, we, we do. We've existed for a really, really long time, but unfortunately we're not as acknowledged as the Queens. And there are several, uh, the U S of a system is the, I want to say one of the largest drag King yes. competitions that oh, yeah. are, are, you know, um, all over the country. Oh yeah. And, but we're still not ex as acknowledged as uh, the Queens. And I really, it's right. some of us, they, they don't put in the work. They're too much drama. They don't put in the costuming. Um, it, it's a multitude of reasons, but I just see it going downhill more and more lately, like over the last couple of years. And I don't have a reason. Um, I can't give you a reason as to why that, that, that went down. Honestly. Yeah. But I think it's pioneers like yourself, oh, you know, who have. Wait a minute. Is that your nice the, way of calling me old as dirt? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm older pioneer. than you. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm older than you. <laughs> I'm a pioneer. Wait, no, 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 no. You just started drag before me, but I'm older than you. How, how screwed up is that? You're no, wait. You're older than me by, same... by a year or so. Exactly. I'll be 49 in December. Like, what is that? <laughs> Pioneer. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. But no, but I mean, but we're putting the work and putting the effort and putting like your blog out there. Like, I got to sit here and say, like, AJ puts this blog out there point by point. You know, you want to know about drag. I mean, it's literally written out for you, you yeah. know, and you can't get any more basic than that but a and lot of for, the entertainers like it, now don't want to hear about old school drag they think that they're yes it has evolved but as i said earlier some of the basics are always and right. should always remain the same and absolutely a lot of their attitudes is well i'm going to do this my way because this is what works and 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 i don't care what you say and again right. that's sad because in this mm -hmm. business, I discovered you should always remain teachable no matter what you think. Exactly. <laughs> and I think a big problem is ego becomes a problem. Oh, yeah. Um, they get one title and they lose their head. And they automatically assume that now, okay, I'm a professional. No, it doesn't work that way. Professional comes they from compete. here. Not a lot of them compete there. just to have bragging rights. And unfortunately... Exactly. That's a really sad thing because there's a lot of responsibility that comes with titles. Yeah. And exactly. uh, they don't realize that once you have a crown and it doesn't matter if it's like a pride title or a bar title, once you have a title, you're in the public eye, period. And you have to wear exactly. that crown even when you're not wearing that crown. Right, right. There have been several times I would be posting something on Facebook and have to erase everything I just said because it's inappropriate. Damn it! Right, right. And you're like, mm, no, but I have to say this, but how do I say this? <laughs> and it takes me two hours! Son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you get, you know, but that's the whole thing. Is one thing you, you, you stressed to me and you taught me, the crown does not define me. I no. define the crown. Yes. You know, and those are words that you told me that freaking pierced me and it's, it's humility. You have to keep a sense of humility because that title is only going to get you so far. You're yeah. going to get yourself the rest of the way. So, you know, yeah, no. I mean, if it anything, even took I, me like a I, while. It took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> uh, humility was definitely yeah. not something I exhibited for a long time. Um, right. But it's true. The crown... The crown and the craft doesn't define you. You still have to define yourself right. at the end of the day. Exactly. But a lot of these people, like I, the first thing I ask an entertainer, if they hit me up and they're getting ready for their first pageant, my first question to them is, why are you running? 
Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because if you don't know why you're running or you tell me that, that you've only been performing for a couple of months and you're running for your first pageant, I'm like, um, you may want to get your sea legs wet first. Right. But to them, right. it's just bragging rights. And it kills me when they win, they start winning these titles, and then they think that the, it means that they're better than everybody else. Winning yeah. a title does not mean that you are better than anybody else in the room. It just means that you were better prepared. Right. For the competition. Right. Exactly. But they exactly. don't realize that. They, they, you're just better than ever. I'm just better than you because I have this title and that title. Man, listen, if I yeah. still thought like that, I would be in some deep doo-doo. <laughs> uh-uh. And that's the whole thing. I, I, I... You I would love to see kings express more, more heart, more humility. I would love to more see that. More thought into their numbers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they That's get definitely. on that stage, and and they they don't realize that it's not about them. The minute you hit that right. stage, it's about your audience. It ain't got nothing to do with yeah. you. And so they get on the stage without any thought to their numbers. Some of them don't know their words, which is my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> um, it, it does. It, it irritates. It irritates me to no end. Um, because they gauge and my daddy pounded it into my head that you needed to know your lyrics like you wrote it. Right. Right. So like it's I look at some of these entertainers now and it's like, if this is the respect that you're giving the craft, what does it say about you? Yeah, yeah. Period. Unless you're old as dirt, like you don't remember. <laughs> if I don't remember it, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, Bridget Maximum said, be honored at all times, no showboat. And girl, that yeah. is just, you just put the nail on the head. But a lot of these younger, and I understand that when you're new and you're just getting into this, it's exciting and it's this and it's that. It's exciting. But you still have to put in, you have to put in the work and you have to be willing to put in the work. And if you're not, it shows. Why are they going to keep coming back to see you if you ain't doing nothing? <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. That's my little two cents. And nobody ever listens to the little Puerto Rican, but okay. Well, we are at nine o'clock. Um, I want to thank everybody who came and saw the first half and now the second half. Um, <clears throat> AJ, thank you, Pops, for doing this interview, for thank pouring you your heart me. out. Yourself. <clears throat> you know where to find me if you need me, boo boo. Well, yeah. Hopefully, I'll be getting down there next year. You need to because, see, that would be one of the very few times I might step out and get into all holy hell. Yeah, um, yeah. we're going to get in trouble. We're going to go to yeah. church. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I like you church. You know, Ty would be very glad to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, it might yeah, be I'm a different experience. It may be a different experience this time because you'll be alone. I guess, I actually want to share a quick story. When 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 I asked AJ to be my drag dad, and, and and AJ didn't ask me, I was very picky, and I'm like, I went to AJ. I'm like, are you gonna be my drag dad? It was just straight up, you know. And AJ was like, wait, whoa, wait, whoa, <laughs> you know. But I, I I find it funny because, I mean, we just connected in such a way, and I have learned so much, you know, as as an to be an entertainer, to be a drag king, to I have learned so much from AJ, and I do recommend any king out there, please go to the Male Illusion One Hundred uh, Blog, One Hundred One Blog, um, group, get in there because there is much to learn, and if you're not willing to learn, you shouldn't be in the business, yeah. you know. But I do want to thank you, AJ. Thank you for opening your heart coming on, sharing your thoughts, sharing your life so that people can get to know the people behind the entertainer. 
I thank you for having no. me, my love. You know I'll do anything for you. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> it's because <laughs> I'm a good boy. Scary place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, and I want to thank you for what you do because you... You're the epitome of old drag, even though you haven't been doing it for a long time. And um, I oh, love that about you. You know, your your respect for the craft, and you have a passion for it. That that's what's lacking in the in the entertainers nowadays. Passion. Yes. Yeah. And you have yeah. that, and and you bust your your behind on on your costumes and whatnot. So you make me proud. You ain't even got to be in the same state as me. I watch you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to reach me uh, if you need me baby boy of course same here all right um be ready for our next will be tiara masu will be our next interview um and if you have any recommendations of entertainers that you want to get to know a little bit better um once again hit life's a drag um and thank you everybody thank all you right, good night Bye. Bye.